Hello, hello, guys. My name is Anna. Uh, I'm from Georgia, woman fitting master and professional chess coach. So um, in the previous videos, we talked a little bit about the openings, <clears throat> like overall, like classification, Italian game, Petrov defense, the Philidor's defense. Um, today, we will talk about the Scotch game, which is like a, um, one of the really interesting and also like a good opening for white against e5. Uh, which is technically less popular than um, uh, Italian game and Rui Lopez, but it's also really a uh, good opening and a lot of people plays it. So let me guys show you what is the Scotch game looks like. There is also Scotch Gambit, but we will talk about the Scotch Gambit a little bit later. First, let's talk about the Scotch game. And it is e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, well, standard from start and technically best for both sides and then instead of bishop c4 which is italian game and instead of bishop b5 which is Rui lopez we play d4 this is called the uh, scotch game and um, what is the good side and what's the best part about the scotch game and why i personally really really like it first um it's like um I don't like uh, um, how it's called symmetrical positions. Sorry, guys, symmetrical positions. And uh, in the Italian and Spanish positions, there is a lot of lines where we can end up with the symmetrical positions. So, if you're a player who don't likes the symmetry and likes to like um, play something different and not to have the same position as the opponent will have, then before is the good option. First, we try to fight from the center to gain some space and to get some play in the center. And also, like, uh, mm, uh, mm, we will avoid the symmetry. And that's what I really, really like about Scotch game. And that's why I play it if I play for. Mostly, I'm a d4 player. I prefer d4, uh, Queen's Gambit, and other lines of the d4. But I also play for sometimes. And Scotch game is one of my favorite uh, openings. So for black, actually, it's almost forced to take. Uh, if black will not take... Okay, so first of all, uh, let's like um, talk about the ideas behind the moves. Why black plays against e4, e5? The main idea of the e5 is to not give opponent like a space in the center and to not let opponent to advance the second pawn and get the center with the two pawns. That's the main plan behind e5, right? But now let's think logically. If after that, like in the scotch as we have, and we will not take it, then the question is why our pawn is there if we let opponent to have the two pawns in the center, right? So that's why for black, um, it's not even the question. They have to take this pawn because if they will not take, and some people here plays d6 to just protect them, e5 pawn, uh, then white have like two good options and both are good actually. Uh, I, I play both of them. It's defense from my mood and it's defense what I prefer to do. One is to advance the pawn, get the more space and also it's the tempo move. It attacks the knight and when the knight goes we can also advance the another pawn. So we have a little bit better um, position because of the center, because of the space, um, because like... um. That knight on e7 is badly placed. Sometimes actually black even moves the knight on the b8. And it makes sense because from the e7 it will be harder to find a good square for it. Probably only on g6 and f4. And that's why I also... Um, that's why black sometimes also plays knight b8. So maybe if they want to like um, get knight on d7 or c5 or they prefer other square for the knight. Well knight b6 is also the option. Well knight b5 is all before is not even the option because it's misplaced. It's not creates any threats. Um, it don't have a good squares to go after that. It will be attacked. So it's, uh, it's it's not even the question to play this, right? It's not a good move. Um, so d5 and when knight goes and yeah, we have space the second option against d6 and if black will not take and actually i checked some databases and um below um 1200 a lot of people below the 1200 rating points a lot of people don't take sony for actually the main move is almost d6 there so um let's also 
learn about this answer. If this is like a D takes E. Um, okay, so D5 was good. And the second good move is D takes E. And if we like to get the good end game position, then this uh, option is for us. Why? So let's say if opponent takes with a pawn, that makes sense. If they take with the knight, we do the same thing, take, take and play end game. Or if they take with the pawn, we do the same. We exchange the queens. <coughs> Sorry, guys. And black can't take it with the knight because if a pawn is hanging after, they will lose the pawn. So they're forced to take it with the king. And then we get the bishop. And this is a little bit better end game to play. And I will explain why. First of all, like in the end game position, it's completely okay to have king in the middle, right? It's like um um in the end game, it's mostly like a uh we try to activate our king and keep it near to the center and it makes sense to have the king there uh but um um at this point it's a little bit still dangerous to have king in the middle because there's a lot of pieces on the board and this king can get attacked and also the fact that uh the difference between this end game and the philidor defense end game is the fact that black already have the knight here they don't have that famous idea of c6 king c7 to hide the king if you guys remember it from the Philidor, from the previous video. Um, and th this king feels a little bit uncomfortable in the center. So this is also a good option for white to play. If we like to play end games and if you like this position. Otherwise, d5 is also good. And yeah. So that's why black is almost forced to take on d4. We also take back. And here, now black have a um, couple of options. Uh, the best for black is bishop c5. This is the best move. Uh, but there is also knight f6, developing move, knight d4, and also a lot of people place this, but it's not good. And I will explain why it's not good. Um, and also there's the queen f6 move, uh, which is also interesting. And uh, the d5 move. So let's cover as much as we can in one video. So... Um, First, why knight d4 is not good, and a lot of people place this. The reason why it's not good, so why we mostly do not develop our queen too early in the game, right? It's the main reason is that it gets the tempo attacked by knight, and then we are losing the tempo. We need to move it, but b8 knight is not there anymore. So what what will attack us? Nothing. So technically this queen, the scotch game queen, in this situation is perfect queen, which can't get attacked by knight anymore. It will can't attack by bishop anymore. It can only get attacked by pawn, but it's not even the winning tempo thing. And also after pushing this, black will receive the backward pawn and they will also white uh, they will white will also have the d5 outpost. We will talk about the backward pawns and outpost and other strategical ideas um after we cover a couple of like opening videos we'll talk about it and um yeah so um uh that's why this queen is like a beast <laughs> it's super strong for black now it's hard to develop the pieces for example developing the bishop uh well those squares are not even option and developing is not good because the g7 pawn is hanging so we uh, black technically can develop it they also can't develop the knight because of the tempo if I move and this knight struggles to find a good square because queen is just blocking everything. And um, mostly then they go back because if they go to the corner, white will even lose the knight because it's trapped and stuck. I'm sorry, black will lose the knight because it's trapped. And that's why knight f6 is not a good move. Um, the queen f6 is also option for black, but against this we have another tempo move, which is e5. And um, yeah, it's still little bit better for white so that's why mostly in this position black plays d6 to avoid the e5 so they want to develop the knight because they can develop the bishop it's hanging and that's why they're doing d6 first to prepare the knight f6 and to not get e5 after that so d6 um so after d6 um white just continues to develop the pieces the bad part about this pawn push is the bishop is blocked now, right? It's like a blocked and um, not really good. And also like white just develops the pieces like knight, bishop, like knight c3, for example, bishop c4, castle. 
and here the, the for white um they can do either uh kind of like a f45 try uh they can like just develop the bishop f4 bishop g5 and the rook d1 and pressure this and well actually it's a little bit more comfortable to fight for to play this right and because they have more space they have better center they have better pieces so yeah it's a little bit better to play for white that's why taking on the d4 it's not in the best option for black and that's why uh the others are better bishop c5 and knight f6 have some kind of like a similarities and um i prefer to cover them in another video together and also the queen f6 because all those moves are really 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 connected so in this video we covered the knight d4 and also after d5 uh the problem after d5 push is that uh, even now i have a couple of good options against it one is the bishop g5 which is like a good pin um, another one is to just take the central pawn and force the pawn into develop queen too early, which can be again be the problem. For example, here there is the one line where we like to play end game. We can just check, and um, opponent is forced to cover it with this bishop because bishop e7 not works. Uh, white have really annoying knight b5 move, and then they struggle to protect the c7 pawn actually when knight is already developed on the c6 guys this attack is stronger on c7 because if the knight was on b8 mostly opponent would have knight a6 yeah that knight looks a little bit ugly but from the a6 that knight can protect the c7 square right so that's why after developing this they don't have knight a6 anymore and this square is weaker and also guys in other positions it's not has to be against like exactly this position in other situations when you see the knight is already developed and you have a good opportunity to play knight b5 and threaten that non-protected pawn let's do it let's do it why not um so um um uh, that's why here is also the bishop e6 move where we can also like take and just get the end game if you want and uh, that will be the isolated pawn and white help after castle they bring the rook they have pressure and it's like a it's it looks like a good idea to attack that pawn so also against the d5 like i said there is the bishop b5 move and after bishop b5 the problem for black is they don't have bishop d7 because he takes team and if they d takes him like this is another move for them uh the here actually white have a couple of interesting moves again uh the one is the knight c3 to just ignore and queen d4 is not oh and also to like a create a trap right now queen d4 not works um uh, because like a uh, even we just take and it's pinned or either we just remove the defender first and then take but it's pinned we can just instantly take it and um this knight c3 is actually the interesting move but besides knight c3 there is the castle there's knight c6 i'm not a fan of the knight c6 um uh, and i will tell you guys why because after queen exchange Black have a6, this magic move, which saved them. Because they can't take here after bishop takes, it's a problem, right? But they have this a6 move, and not a lot of people knows about this move. And um, uh, it stops everything, because um, if bishop retreats, now they have bishop d7 already. The difference is, if you would play bishop d7 immediately, knight goes back, and it also protects the bishop, and white will end up with the extra piece because they took knight on c6, right? But in this situation, after a6, bishop a4, now it's hanging. If you move it, it's pinned and black will take the bishop. And also this knight can be moved and also uh, protect the bishop at the same time. So this a6 is a really interesting idea here. Uh, so that's why I'm not a fan of the knight c6 and I prefer either knight c3, either castle, boss are good. And white is more developed and they have good attack chances. Uh, also, uh, so like I said, in the next lesson, uh, in the next, sorry, video, we will talk about knight f6 and bishop c5 and queen f6, which are like a better moves. And also we will talk about a little bit about the scotch gambit, which is after d4, when opponent takes 
we have bishop c4 and this is the gambit line which is also really interesting so if guys if you guys have any questions write right down below and i will try to upload the second video too as soon as possible to have the overall knowledge about the scotch game and how it works like okay have a wonderful day all of you guys and see you next time bye bye